live from downtown Bakersfield. 23 ABC News at 5 starts now. Good evening. We start tonight with breaking news out of the Middle East. U.S. officials confirming that Tehran has reportedly fired several surface to surface missiles at Iraq's air base housing U.S. troops over America's killing of a top Iranian general. This is video that was shown by Iranian state TV. You can see it there. The base had been on heightened alert due to Iran's vow to retaliate over the killing of Guard General Qasem Soleimani. According to reports earlier today, a stampede broke out at the funeral for the Iranian general killed in a U.S. airstrike. At least 56 people were killed and more than 200 were injured as thousands thronged the procession. The Trump administration says it had information the general was plotting to kill significant numbers of American soldiers and diplomats in the coming days. Iran says it was a peacekeeping mission. The U.S. says it didn't want to start a war, but it is prepared to finish one. Officials telling ABC News that the president has been briefed on the situation. We, of course, will continue to cover the very latest on this story in our newscasts and online at turn to 23.com. The search for the driver of a pickup truck involved in a crash that injured three children and left one dead is now over. Bakersfield police arresting a man earlier today. BPD says 32 year old Ivaristo Perez Nunez was located at his home following an investigation. Officers attempted to arrest him, but he resisted and assaulted an officer. He was eventually taken into custody. According to Bakersfield police at about 330 this morning, two vehicles collided in the area of Cottonwood and East Pacheco roads. Police say four children were in one of the vehicles and all of them were hurt. One of the children, a nine year old, suffered major injuries and has since died as a result of those injuries. Police say after that first collision, another vehicle heading south on Cottonwood Road ran into the vehicle with the children inside. No one else was injured, but Perez Nunez is facing vehicular manslaughter charges as well as an assault on a peace officer and driving without a license charge. Back here at home, the effort to combat homelessness continues. The city of Bakersfield is hosting its third community outreach meeting at the Mechanics Bank Convention Center at 6 p.m. tonight. The city is encouraging the public to attend and share how homelessness may be affecting their community. 23 ABC's Bayon Wang joins us live from the convention center ahead of the meeting with a preview of what's expected. Bayon. Well, Jessica, if we were to compare it to the last two uh, meetings that they had here at the end of 2019, then certainly a lot of residents expected here for this highly anticipated meeting, the first one of the new year, where they're basically invited to voice their concerns about how homelessness is affecting their community, but also for city council members to really educate them about the implications of the two low barrier emergency shelters that they are considering uh, here for this year. Uh, and one of those locations is the Calcott property pretty uh, in southeast Bakersfield. Now, back in October, the city announced a principal agreement with the company to purchase the 69,000 square feet property. However, at a city council meeting in November, officials decided to hit pause on moving forward and requested city staff to do additional research on the property. Now, another location the city is considering for a low barrier shelter is in East Bakersfield, which is in close proximity to the Bakersfield Homeless Center. This is a much smaller property, according to officials. It's about 32,000 square feet, and here is what City Council Member Andre Gonzalez had to say about both locations at the last community outreach meeting. I've been hearing a lot of feedback from community members regarding the both uh, both options, the Brown Street side and the Calcott side, and uh, we're hearing a lot of positive things about Calcott. It feels like there's a lot more momentum. People understand that this facility would provide the the space necessary to provide comprehensive resources. Now, city staff spokesman uh, Joe Conroy told me that the city is in favor of the Calcutt property, but that's really going to be up to city council members on January 22nd for a scheduled meeting where they're basically going to make one of three decisions. They're either going to move forward with the two properties that they're currently considering. They're going to put pause again and or they're going to put pause again and consider more research for those properties, or they're just going to deny both locations and 
uh, search for more locations, a process that they spent the majority of 2019 doing. Now, this meeting here is underway in about an hour or so, but we'll have updates for you at our 6 and 11 p.m. shows. For now, live at the Mechanics Bank Convention Center, Bayan Wang, 23 ABC, connecting you. All right, Payan, thanks. New developments in a deadly shooting at an East Bakersfield motel. The sheriff's office making a second arrest in the shooting that happened last month. KCSO detectives arrested 37-year-old Benjamin Bravo for the killing at the Motel 6 on East Brundage Lane on December 12th. Last month, deputies were dispatched to the scene. When they arrived, they found a victim of a shooting, and he was transported to an area hospital. After the first victim arrived, two others arrived by a personal vehicle. 30-year-old Daniel Gill later died, and another victim had major wounds. The third had minor. A few days later, 29 year old Jose Chavez was arrested for murder and attempted murder. Bravo is facing the same charges and is scheduled to be in court this Thursday. A man is behind bars after leading the CHP on a pursuit that covered more than 20 miles from Kern County into LA County. According to patrol officials in Mojave, officers tried to pull over a wrong way driver overnight just outside of Rosamond. A pursuit ensued before eventually ending in Palmdale. The CHP said they spoke to the driver who surrendered peacefully. No one was hurt during that pursuit. Bakersfield police need your help locating a man wanted for questioning regarding a sexual battery in downtown Bakersfield. It happened on December 3rd at the get bus terminal off of Chester Avenue. BPD says the suspect groped a teenage female juvenile against her will while she was waiting at the terminal. The suspect is described as a black man between 18 to 19 years old, about six feet tall, weighing around 140 pounds. If you have any information, you're asked to call BPD at 327-7111. We have new details on a Bear Valley police officer who accidentally shot himself. Court records show that officer Chad Foss was under, quote, extreme alcohol intoxication when he shot himself in the leg at the Oak Country Club. Bear Valley police were called out to the country club around 10 p.m. on New Year's Eve. When they arrived, they found officer Ross with a non life threatening gunshot injury to his leg. Court records state that Foss had red watery eyes and had extreme difficulty carrying on a cohesive conversation due to his level of intoxication. According to the records, a blood sample was taken from Ross to test his blood alcohol concentration. Ross was then taken to Kern Medical for treatment for his gunshot injury. Bear Valley Police Chief Tim Melanson says Foss has been placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. The chief released a statement on the incident, which read in part, quote, I share in the community's concern over this officer's actions and recognize the danger the officer posed to the public. Such carelessness does not reflect the values and professional standards of this department. Department. You can read his full statement on our website, turn to 23.com. Leslie Chance's youngest daughter, Samantha Chance, was called by the defense to testify today. 23 ABC's Alex Bell joins us in studio with the latest on the trial. Alex? Samantha Chance was just 13 years old at the time of her father's death, and now she's 19. According to Samantha, her parents were very affectionate, but they did argue about money and clothes. But before we review her testimony, I want to let our viewers know that most of the videos and images you see during our coverage are from opening statements, older footage from the investigation, and the day of the murder or previous court hearings. We want to remind everyone that for the trial, cameras were not allowed in the courtroom, but for opening statements, only and they will be allowed in the courtroom for closing statements as well. The last time Samantha saw her father was the night before he died on August 24th, 2013. According to her, there were no arguments between her parents that day. However, in a 2013 interview with the detective, Samantha stated her parents were arguing the night before Todd's death. Six years ago, she told detectives her dad was planning on going out that evening and wanted to wear certain clothes, but couldn't because her mother was washing them. Samantha also said in that 2013 interview that her parents argued about money and clothes. Prosecutor Andrea Kohler asked Samantha if she remembered telling officials in 2013 that on the night before his death, he went out for about an hour, but returned home. Samantha said she didn't remember saying that and testified today that she never remembers him coming home that night. However, she also testified that she would have no reason to lie to officers back in 2013. On the day of her father's death, Samantha says she woke up around 11 a.m. and went downstairs and saw her mother and sister Sarah sitting on the couch watching TV. Samantha said she joined them and her mother's demeanor was not a unusual. Defense attorney Tony Lidget showed Samantha the series of surveillance videos which prosecutors argue show Chance trying to make her way back home the morning of Todd's death. Samantha repeatedly said she did not recognize anyone in the surveillance video as her mother. 
Also, Samantha previously told officials her mother had never gone to visit her dad's grave. Today, she testified she has. Prosecutor Andrea Kohler asked Samantha how she knew her mother went. She said her sister Sarah told her. Legit also asked Samantha about that trip to Las Vegas in 2013, where the family attended a CSI experience where visitors solve crime scene scenarios. Samantha testified today that her, it was her mom's idea to go. Court will resume tomorrow at 9 a.m. Live in studio, I'm Alex Bell for 23 ABC News, connecting you. Well, fog was the story today, especially across the San Joaquin Valley, and we are already seeing those clouds that are still stuck over the valley that kept temperatures relatively cool. 46 degrees right now here in Bakersfield, but I do want to show you some video from the Kern County Sheriff's Office that their helicopter caught this morning. So you can see that dense fog that is just hovering over the valley. This video was taken in the early morning hours today, but you can see very gloomy conditions. And as of right now, we are continuing continuing to track a, st a stratus deck. So what that means is that fog has not quite lifted and it's just stuck over the valley. So as you can see, those temperatures are in those mid 40s, even 51 degrees in Arvin. But Lake Isabella is warmer than us right now. That is because they have seen passing clouds throughout the day. So that sunshine was able to peak in just a little bit. But this is going to be clearing out as we head into your Wednesday because we are tracking two back to back systems. And it looks like the second one could be bringing some rain into Kern County as early as Thursday. I have more details on when we'll be seeing that and what that means for an increase in winds tomorrow coming up next. The Kern Law Enforcement Agency and Kern County Firefighters Association have launched a new campaign to stand with the oil industry amid growing scrutiny from California Governor Gavin Newsom. 23 ABC's Austin Westfall has a preview of that story. Firefighters and deputies are against the state's hard stance against oil because they rely on the industry to get their paycheck. We'll have more on that coming up at 23 ABC News at 6. The California Highway Patrol is hosting a free Start Smart class tonight for teen drivers and their parents. Officials say the two hour class teaches the importance of safe driving habits, the consequences of a poor choice behind the wheel, and tips on how to avoid a collision. The free class is tonight at 6 at the Bakersfield CHP office at 9855 Campagnoni Street. If you'd like to sign up, you can call the Bakersfield CHP office at 396 6600. The Sheriff's Office is gearing up for the first day of its academy training, and today they released a video of last year's training. Sergeant Brandon Rutledge spoke about what the recruits go through. During that time, we train them to handle all sorts of different uh, types of events out there, and that's why we kind of put them through uh, the grinder a little bit just to make sure that they're in good physical condition, able to uh, safely protect and serve them. This year's academy training starts next month. It usually lasts about 24 days. They go through physical training in day one of the academy to acclimate them to the lifestyle that is expected of them. You can no longer apply for this year's academy, but here are some ways to apply for next year's training. Apply as a deputy sheriff trainee who are paid by KCSO. You must pass a written physical, psych, and background check to be a deputy. You can also pay $3,000 to be a part of it, but you must still pass the same requirements. And 26 officers will graduate Thursday from the Bakersfield Police Academy. The Bakersfield Law Enforcement Training Academy class will host a badge pinning ceremony just outside of the Bakersfield College Edward Simonson Performing Arts Center at 10 a.m. The graduation ceremony is set to be held inside the Performing Arts Center at 11 a.m. Thursday. It is open to the public.